So do I get 30 seconds too? I think I could do that one. No? Wow, what a wonderful group. Hello, everyone. I think more people came in while I was sitting down. So I'm so very excited um, to be here. Um, and we'll get warmed up. And I hope you all know that this is not going to be just me talking. Um, I'm a creative writing teacher, so there's an exercise at the end and maybe a test. <laughs> So good morning, creative writing people. Good morning, creative morning people. Um, when I was asked to speak about curiosity, um, I immediately went back to being this little girl on my grandparents' farm in Indian Creek, Kentucky. And that is where all my stories began. Uh, that's a place that I go to often, sift of memory back to my childhood again and again. So I asked myself in preparation for this uh, first, what did that little girl, Chrissy, what was she curious about? And what I remember is that one thing she was curious about is where her mother was. My mother had been diagnosed with mental illness two years before I was born. And after I was born, she was institutionalized for almost 10 years. Uh, mental illness was not something that was spoken about in my house, even though its presence loomed large enough to be a part of the very air we breathed. Um, and so that, that's a wonderful picture of my mother. So that became one of my haunts as a writer. It was something that I was always curious about in my childhood. And then it became one of my haunts as a writer, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, it's become the theme um, in my novel, Birds of Opulence, uh, curiosity about relationships between mothers and daughters, about the ways in which mental illness is ignored. So number two, my second um, curiosity as that little girl um, wondered about her place in the world. I would walk to the top of the knob that was right behind her house and look over into the valley that was in the next county. And I would wonder how far that land went and if there were other girls in other counties and other cities and other states, even in other countries, who were just like me, wondering if there were other bookish, quirky, quiet kids um, in the world. That is me with, um, if you're from Appalachia, uh, what I'm wearing there is called a false face, uh, which has served as um, a lot of inspiration and a lot of metaphor uh, in my writing, the idea of the false face, um, and also the idea about where you are uh, in the world, where you are in the universe. Um, and so for me, that curiosity about what other people were doing at that exact moment was a way for me to develop a connection with a wider world. What I haven't said is that I grew up um, in Indian Creek, Kentucky, up a holler. Um, for the longest time in my childhood, my family was the only people I knew. Everybody I knew was related to me. Um, and outside that immediate family, everyone I knew was white. Um, so that place in the world, and I think my stance is still a curious one. Uh, that's one of my, my great uncle back behind me in front of that clapboard house. Um, so that is still, too, is a curiosity that I'm still haunted by. Uh, 
I've written about it, um, this idea of where one is in the universe in both my first and my third books. So my third curiosity was, and still is, this is primary, when are we going to eat <laughs> and what are we going to eat, right? So this is, um, well, that, that's a, a wonderful picture of some of the drinks we serve. Shout out to Marcus with the June bug um, at the Wild Fig. Uh, but the first uh, picture was, did you, who, let's, this is part of the quiz. Who knew what that was? Anybody, the first picture? Anybody know what that is? Sorghum molasses, right? That was a mainstay uh, in our household. And I'm still very much in interested in foods that connect me to Appalachia, foods that connect me to home, and, and foods that, you know, food period, foods that don't connect me. Um, <laughs> foods that I don't even like, I'm interested in all of them. Um, but that's still one of my favorites. You take the sorghum molasses, you pour them in a bowl, you take a spoon of butter, and you mix it up, until it's creamy like that, and then you plop two buttermilk biscuits in the middle of it. Heaven. <laughs> so um, I often get in trouble with this with my editor, but I have these long serial descriptions of food has been a primary part of my writing. So there are lots more, but those are just three of my childhood curiosities. Um, and there's still three things that I began thinking about when I was a child, and they've haunted my creativity into adulthood. There, of course, are many, many more, but those are three that I wanted to talk t about today that are primary consistent. So how did this happen? How does something that I was curious about when I was a child still affect my work today? I think it's because these things uh, were things that I chose to hang on to, um, not in a crippling way, uh, but I have not blocked that part of myself that question and imagines around these issues. So the base of every curiosity is that question, why? And no one can ask why like a child, right? Um, oh, this sounds annoying just the way I've written it. Mommy, <laughs> mommy, why is the grass green? Mommy. Why does the lady next door smile like that? Daddy, why is the cat having babies? Mommy, why is daddy mad? <laughs> so parents usually say something like, I don't know, honey. But it goes on But the why. But why? But why? So we are persistent in our pursuit of answers when we're children. Uh, and if we were able to keep our sense of curiosity keen and sharpened, into adulthood, I believe that we would have a better handle on the problems that we're currently experiencing in this country. It's daring and brave to tap into your curiosity for the betterment of our nation, for the betterment of our world, for the betterment of our community, for the betterment of your own creativity. When we're children and we tap into this is one thing, but when we're able to tap into our curiosities and questions as adults, um, I believe we're able to bloom to our fullest potential. So the base of every curiosity is that question, why? And the base of every good story is, what if? Children have the ability to teach us so much. Um, someone told me yesterday that if I watch the movements and the breath of a child, that I would be witnessing yoga in its purest form. She said, learn from them how to inhabit your body properly. And I think that we can learn from children how to inhabit our minds and our creativity properly too. Children, because they have the ability to be curious without censorship, are the most creative human beings among us. So, it's not a very good rendering of her art, but, um, and that's my fault, my picture. But um, this is um, a painting by my granddaughter, Zaria, um, who passed away a few years ago. She passed away at nine, um, but this was when she was about seven. And um, this, she had this wonderful spirit about her, 
And this is something that you all probably remember. So do you remember when you were six or seven years old and you would draw something, you'd show it to your parents and, you'd, and they would say, honey, what's that? And you would very proudly say, that's a cat or that's you, granny. Uh, and um, your little chest would puff out and you were so proud of what you created. And then what happens around the fourth grade is that we begin to hide our magic, right? Uh, we're no longer fueled by being inquisitive. Instead, we become fueled by self-doubt, by comparing our work to others. We're fueled by societal norms. Not me, right? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> and what's expected of us? We're fueled by money, greed. We're fueled by negative thoughts. We're fueled by racism, by homophobia, by anger, by anxiety, by responsibility, by othering. We're fueled by deadlines. We're fueled by the possibility or not of promotion. So the list would be as long as this room if we kept on, right? So we're, we become to be fueled by all of these things. Um, so how can we get back to that childhood state. Is that possible? Um, so that's the question that I'm putting for you, and I'm gonna challenge you to become children in just a few minutes. But um, I think that one way for us to do it is through rediscovering or perhaps discovering for the first time what we're truly curious about. What fuels your creativity? What do you have questions about? I think we should always be thinking um, about those things. I mean, we have to think about, you know, okay, you know, how are we gonna get the money in this pocket? Like, that's the reality of being uh, an American and being able to live, right? That's our reality. Um, but I think in order for you to be happy and in order for you to thrive, you should always be thinking and sort of moving toward what you're most curious about. So, um, Jason, next one. So this is a, a photograph of Zaria. Um, that's in our old iteration of the Wild Fig books. And she always had her nose in a book and she was always doing something um, creative. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay. So not, not many of you know him, you sort of know of him, um, and it's mostly because he's so introverted that he barely talks to people. Um, but my partner, Ron, is uh, an artist, a visual artist, and he's a very good one. And not just because he's my partner, although that's, you know, that's part of it. Uh, <laughs> he's also uh, a poet. Uh, he's an intellectual. He has a unique ability, like many artists, to live in his head and to be engaged in the pursuit of answers all the time. Like if you come in the bookstore, um, we're not sort of a typical friendly bookstore because sometimes Ron is there and he's not really there. <laughs> like he may be in front of you, but it's not that he's ignoring you, he's not there. Um, and so he's the kind of person that can constantly follow these threads of curiosities to new places. Um, and if you ask him how he's able to do that, um, he'll say something like this. I am still that six-year-old little boy who plays in mud puddles in the driveway beside my parents' house in Louisville. And he really is. And, and I think he's a good artist because he's able to tap into that boy self the pure sweet spot of inquisitiveness. Um, so not everyone can tap into their seven-year-old self. This is another one of his pieces. And he also designed the cover of um, the new versions of my books that University Press put together. So he did both of those pieces um, as well as the cover for the Birds of Opulence. Um, but not everybody, not all of us can do that. Because I'm, I, even though I consider myself a highly creative person and I am uh, attached to my childhood, I can't quite do it the way that he does. I don't have that sort of pure uh, sweet spot. Um, but I think that I'm always reaching for it. 
right? I'm always asking myself, um, what am I most curious about? What, what fuels my imagination um, in a large way? Um, what kind of curiosities do I have that can change lives? Uh, curiosities that can make a difference. And I try to be in pursuit of those curiosities without flinching. If something comes to you or you've always been haunted by something, you kind of go, Ugh, that's not really, that's not cool. People are not going to accept that. Um, then I don't think you're, you're living your highest life. I think simply put, curiosity is the engine that drives creativity of any kind. Um, that's be it, be it personal, um, be it um, some artistic endeavor, be it a business in, endeavor, um, being curious enough about something to be excited about it. Um, when, you, when you have um, something, when you're doing something and you're no longer excited about it, and you're no, no longer curious about what the next step is, it's time to get out of it. It really is. It's time to move on to the next thing and, and follow your lead, follow that path to the thing that you're most um, curious about. So the act of creating comes to us not by way of imagination alone, but through this cyclic convergence of experience, which I believe is linked intrinsically to memory and sometimes all the way back to childhood memory, observation, how you see the world, and that layer of curiosity. Curiosity being the engine. Uh, you can have any old bright idea and be proud of yourself, right? Uh, <laughs> but if it isn't fueled by a sense of discovering what's on the other side and why, then your creation will be stagnant and perhaps even thwarted. Um, creativity is not just the process of thinking, but it's very much the process of doing. And I meant to say it at the very beginning, but I wanted to say, um, to talk about, um, and of course, DeBron wasn't the only one who had this idea, but I wanted to say what a completely different energy it was coming into this building today with those folks gone off the front lawn. I had to say that. And that, that is a, a creative uh, process. That's a creative move. I mean, it, it, it comes out as activism. Um, it ruffles some people's feathers, but just being curious about, like, why are they still there? Why do they still have them up there? I wish they would take them down. Why they still got them racist Confederates out on our lawn? But until you are involved in the doing, nothing happens. We all were thinking it, right? Every time I drove by here, psh, there they are. I was in my happy place on my way to Wakanda. And there they are. <laughs> so, um, so my curiosities have fueled my creativity for more than 30 years. So 30 years as writer, as professor, as business owner, as sort of a silent partner in this community. Um, I do a lot of things, but Ron and I both are introverts, so we do it with stealth, right? <laughs> okay, we're over here doing this. You can't see us. Um, and other people enjoy being more visible. We just don't. So what I wanted you to do, this is the assignment. So don't, it's not an excuse if you don't have paper, because I know y'all all have a phone, and on that phone is uh, the ability to write something down. If you don't have a piece of paper, borrow a piece of paper from someone else. Write, you can take uh, notes on your, everybody has a piece of paper because you got the book bench brochure. <laughs> no, if they write something important on it, they'll, be, they'll keep it. So I want you to write down three things that you're curious about. These could be personal things, they could be universal, it could be things that you find that you're haunted by. Perhaps these things make their way into your creative process or your creative work. Perhaps they should, if they're not on there.
Buzzer's gonna go off. Think quick. See, y'all, some of y'all are thinking too much. You're already thwarting the process. <laughs> thinking too much. Should be a very quick process. So some of you all don't have paper, so I just know you're doing this in your head and I'm so proud of you. <laughs> no, you got it all written down up here. So does anyone want to share one of their curiosities or all three? I said there'd be a test. This is the test. Okay, thank you. What's your name? Cecilia. Cecilia's curiosities, or one of her curiosities. Okay, thank you. Did y'all hear it? African Revolution, woman empowerment, and, and education. All right? Okay. Yes. Someone else. I don't. Well, I, what, I don't know your name, but <laughs> what is it? Chris. Chris. Uh, I'm about music, space, and okay. Music, space, and people. Right. So then, the other thing you do with your list. Both of those lists were general. Then you begin to move toward them. Right. You go down the road of one of them, and you move closer and closer to something more concrete of how you can take that and, and develop it. I saw a hand, did I imagine it? Okay. Yes, all about the birds and the other ones. Okay. And over here, okay. Okay, yes. You have to be very creative to do all of those things. Um, yes. Yes, how to raise productive kids, right? Okay. Anybody else? One more. I have no idea what time it is because I took my phone away. Well, two more. Damaris and... All theories related to light. Okay. Loneliness and longing. Okay. Yeah. And so all of these things, I, I believe in making lists and then I believe in following them down the path. Like you just make the list, then you have to say, well, what does this mean to me? And you have to be curious enough about it to start excavation to start unpacking those things on your list. Um, so how much time do we have? Okay. I'm willing to answer some questions. And then, okay, let's take, so how many, what, you said we can take some questions. Is this the end? <laughs> What I'm asking is this the end? Okay, so, so okay, we're just going to take everybody hostage and do what we need to do. So I'll take questions first. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And that's true. Like, we can be creative with our own damn selves, all by ourselves over there on Limestone, and y'all won't ever know it. You got to come and see us and see what we're doing. Um, question here and here. I keep, let me look at you all over here. I keep standing this way. Um, yes. The things that I mentioned, they pop up in my work all the time. I'm curious about drowning. Like it had, that's another childhood thing. A lot of mine come from childhood and then I just push through them and what does it mean? So it meant one thing when I was drowning in the creek, then it means something else to be drowning in responsibility, it means something else to be drowning in yeses. I'm learning to say no so that I don't drown. But so that's one of the things, just the idea of drowning and all the different um, aspects of that is one thing that I'm curious about. Melinda. Mm 
This is related to drowning. As an introvert, I am drowning in being a public person. I'm very much an introvert. Um, so like for ex example, like I love being with you all here um, today. I'm not, I've done this enough that I'm not so nervous. I always have some nerves, but like when I leave here, I have to go to Louisville um, to do a reading. But if I didn't, I would go to bed because being with people, being an introvert and being with people, I've learned how to do it, but then when I get in my car, I'm gonna go, oh, I wish I could go to bed. There's a lot of people in there. I wish I could go to bed. Um, so I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm working on it uh, a little bit, and I took my first sort of um, couples retreat last week. It was the first time we'd ever done anything like that, and we went with another couple um, to, somewhere simple and expensive. And we were like, wow, there's not anything we have to do at this moment. Nothing. Well, what are we gonna do? Well, let's just sit here. Well, let's, well, we could take a bourbon trail. Let's do that. Like, we don't have those moments in our lives, so I'm trying to, to find those. So, people are trying to, thank you all so much. People are trying to leave but before you leave, this must happen. So, when I was searching for a, a song uh, that featured curiosity prominently, um, I remembered this song. So we're gonna imagine that it's 1985. Some of you all wasn't, were you all born yet? We need the music. So, it's 1985 and I want you all to, we're gonna dance out of here. I'll sign books if you want me to. Can we turn this up? Do you all know who this is? The Jets, Curiosity. Don't listen to the lyrics, they're very 80s, but dance, stand up. Can we turn it up even more? Thank you all. <laughs> 